Hello YouTube, Mr. Gibson Guy here. Thanks for tuning into this video. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be a, a tabletop look at some helpful hints for old cameras. <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of old camera stuff lately and one of the things I find is that you, there's some helpful hints here and there for people on that were familiar with these older mechanical and, and early electronic cameras that from being around there that can be helpful to younger folks who are now buying old cameras and uh, starting you know, in film photography. Um, <clears throat> and we're gonna, this is kind of a mechanical approach here. We're gonna be doing some taking apart and putting together. And it has to do with batteries because uh, most of these cameras, whether they were mechanical or electronic, still relied on a battery for something. And I, I know that there are a number of real old cameras that are floating around with no battery and a light meter that maybe would work, but some people are never going to change the battery in it because the camera's so old that the battery cover is stuck. Well. There are other remedies that we have. We can unstick battery covers, but I'm going to be taking a look today at how you can find a back door to not have to worry about your battery cover. Um, <clears throat> I have cameras, I have uh, a couple cameras here on the table that you're going to see this today, and uh, both of them have battery compartments that won't open. But both of them have fresh batteries in them that are working because you, if you know what to do, you can still change batteries. Now, let me say this one last thing before we go ahead. When you are going to be looking at uh, these internals of these old cameras, you will find that uh, you're going to be you're looking at something that's been sitting around for 35 or 40 years or 45 or 50 years maybe even and uh, they have little tiny mic almost microscopic screws that hold the things together and these screws have been in there amazingly for 40 or 50 years and they may not be real agreeable about coming out so if you're going to be doing anything like this, you need to make sure you have a screwdriver which uh, is up to the task. Uh, they did some amazing engineering on their little tiny, little itty bitty steel screws that you can barely even see, but they're really strong and they put these things together with these little short screws and they hold this, all these metal parts and brass parts and plastic parts and screws and springs and everything all together with amazing strength. And it may take amazing strength to get them out, but the first thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you have a good uh, screwdriver. And this is not, a, this is probably a barely passable screwdriver. This is a cobalt, which means it came from uh, Lowe's and it comes with a set of bits. These are, of course, two-way bits here. And they're Phillips on one side and slot on the other side. And I went down to the very smallest uh, Phillips slot, Phillips head that I could get. And it's a little bit big, but it still will work for, uh, for the bottom screws on, on a camera. Now, the other thing is these have to be made out of pretty strong steel because what happens is pretty pretty quickly you start screwing up your screwdriver just trying to turn some of these little tiny stuck screws out and get them out. If you can see that close. Yeah, this is a little tiny screw here. So you can see. Um, uh, we're going to be looking at that now. So, yeah, the cobalt at a minimum or look online for some jeweler screwdrivers because you need to get something really good because when you start tearing up these little tiny screw heads, then you, there's never going to be anything that's coming out and you just turn your camera into a paperweight. And we want to 
try to get paperweights turned back into cameras here. That's one of our goals. Uh, <clears throat> so, the batteries. You get stuck batteries and you have, if it's working right, in your old camera, you take a nickel and you put it in this little slot here and you turn it. And if things are all going right, you give it a few turns and everything's going to be fine because we got this little screw-in door that has sides on it. It even has a little diagram there to show you that you're supposed to put the batteries in. A couple of these one and a half right here. And you put them in uh, round side down this way. Like that. And then the other one, the round side down, like that. And the batteries are installed. Then you kind of turn the camera sideways so you can do this because you don't want the battery to pop out. And you kind of hand twist this a little bit. And then you can use your nickel. And Minolta Precision, just like that, we've changed it. So that's the way it's supposed to work. But it doesn't always work out that way. Now before we move to the next camera and we start looking at these other things, so let's take a look at the bottom of this because this is mostly what you're going to run into. If it's a real old camera, it's not going to have a motor drive or auto winder coupling. But this, uh, some companies put little caps over this and some companies like Minolta, they just had this sealed off sticking out here. So you could uh, have your, your gear connection for your auto winder right there. Film rewind button. Not universal as we will see, but most cameras have a film rewind button. And tripod socket, battery cover, battery compartment cover, I guess a technical term for it. And this is on the XD11. These are good cameras. And this one's still working like it was new. And I can notice this can this XD does not have a green 125 on it, so that means this is an early one. So this has been around since 1977. No, yeah, 77. Um, when these first came out, um, nice camera. So that's the camera that works right. Now, what works on the 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 uh, Minolta? is similar on the Olympus, is similar on the Nikon, is it is similar on the Pentax. But people that were always different were the guys at Canon. And they came with some nice cameras, but they came up with some weird ideas too. The early Canons would have, these things were a little bit thicker, and they would have one or two battery compartments on the side of the camera where the film door is. Kind of weird, but you know, now we think we well, use that to open up and you don't have room for batteries, but they used to have battery compartments along here. Of course, they were thicker, so they could do that. Uh, more common for Canon is going to be like the A1, the A series cameras. The Canon made up 6 million AE1s and pretty high numbers for their other A-series cameras um, back in the day. And Canon had a different view. They didn't use the nickel on the bottom. They have a motor drive slot. And this had a cap to it, I think, but it's gone. And it has the rewind button. It has a tripod socket, but nothing for batteries. That's because while well, everybody else put their batteries in the base, which we will see in this video was a good marketing idea, Canon did it differently. They put a battery door on the front because they wanted to use a little more powerful battery because their cameras use a lot of electricity. And on this door, there's a little tiny no notch that you have to pull back with your fingernail. Let's see if I can do it like this. A little thing like this. And you can move this, and then when it gets far enough, 
but get far enough. There it goes. It popped. This door will pop open. It's spring loaded like that. And then you see this little tiny cylindrical battery. Um, I'm going to get closer to the cameras. Everything's backwards for me here. So this is the volt that the I think it's a three volt or something 3.5 this is the unusual battery that Canon A series cameras went on and this little plastic door a lot of times this little latch on it would break and then you're left with this thing flopping open and your battery exposed you could lose it at any time so this was not a great feature but you know people that have these that are still working are much happier than the people that have the battery compartment frozen on the bottom, which we're going to get to next, right? So that's Canon. You don't you you have a different thing to deal with because you don't have a bottom and a bottom mounted uh, battery. But here we go with a bottom mounted battery. This is on an Olympus OM2, and uh, yeah, I'm going to use the OM2. I'm going to do a couple of these where we're we're going to take a look at the battery and take it apart. So <clears throat> on the OM2, on the bottom, we don't have a film rewind button because Olympus on the OM1 and OM2, not the others, but on the, those early ones, have this little rewind dial. You twist it up like this, and then your film rewinds. And then when you're done, pop it back to the vertical position. So this is for regular regular photography and twist it up for rewind. And that means we don't have to worry about it down here. Now this, I wanted to use this example because I got this camera recently and that's where I came up with this whole idea. It's this, this is the uh, battery compartment here where we might have the, the uh, motor drive connection. But this one is all boogered up. It's never going to open. Next to it, we have this other port. And this is the motor drive port, or the auto winder port. And it has this little uh, cap that goes on it. I have two OM2s and two OM1s. So when I got this camera, it had been on an auto winder before. So somebody took the cap off and it went who knows where. So I didn't have a cap, but I have auto winders on two of my can, I can't, Olympus cameras. And one of them had a motor drive cover. Of course, it's chrome finished, and so that's why I have this funky looking chrome button, chrome cover on the motor drive cover here for this black camera. Um, and this does work. Oh, yeah, it's starting to move, but I don't like to move it too much because I don't like to mess with I don't like to risk getting them like this. And I'm not going to put the motor drive on it right now. Until I do, then I'll leave it like that. So we need to actually see how else we change this battery. On the Olympus, it takes four screws. This is where your screwdriver your very good quality, high quality screwdriver comes in because this screw and this screw are going to be really hard to get off at first. Little tiny things and it's really easy to slip out. Now, of course, before I made the video, I went sure, made sure that these were not too tight. Let's see if you can see this on... YouTube. Ah, still there. A little bit more. These screws are really tough. There we go. See that? That's the screw right there. Right there. That little tiny dot there. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll pull this bottom, other bottom, other end, end one out here. Oh, yeah, see, it's it's trying to stick. There we go. We got to put a little bit of pressure on it to get it started. They had a lot of turns on these Olympus screws. And there's another one. 
and there's two right here on either side of the tripod socket. Fall into place. There you go. Yeah, I didn't get these too tight. Now one of the things that I bring up to people is if you have an auto winder or a motor drive that you keep on the bottom of your camera, then you don't have to worry about losing covers or losing uh, screws because a motor drive or auto winder will always keep it on. But of course the cameras are much lighter and easy, handier if they don't have them. All right, so here we go. Got the fourth screw right there. And there's underneath. Here is the battery compartment. There. So it's got two of these. Um, these are brand new. I just put them in for this. So they work. And can you stay up? I can stay up over here. Lean on a cannon. Now here is, here's the regular battery cover, and it's not budging. It is not moving. On the Nikon, I can take that off, but I can't take it off here. It's not going to work. Oh, boy. Be careful with those screws, because you drop them on a carpet or something, and you're never going to find them again. I forgot that I had that one in there, but fortunately it made a little noise, so I got all four of those. So. You change your batteries out, and then you put the top back on. Easy peasy, just like this. These screws are short, so you got to kind of push this side down, and you want to get it with the screw thread down into the hole. backwards. There, all right. Now I should be able to get it from there. See, I'm pressing this end down so this one gets into the thread where it needs to be. These bottoms are a little bit curved, so you have to push one end down when you're taking it seriously. Now this one will be popped up, so I have to push it down again on this side. And drop my screw in the hole. Don't drop your screwdriver when you're making a video. All right, now this one started. Should sit right back down into place and move that down. And then I have the two middle ones. These will be easier. I shouldn't say that. Then I'll just curse it definitely. These will be harder. There we go. This one, ah, falls into place. And tighten down. And this one. Let's see if I can nudge this over there. Last screw for the OM1. OM2. There we go. Now, on the OM2, you have a battery check if you go beyond automatic and watch what happens. There. You see a little red light coming on? I kind of got bright light on it here, but... All right, so... That lights up, so we're making contact on that. That was the easy one, the OM2 or OM1s. Now, this is 
for some older stuff. And we've got to do some Nikon here because there's one extra problem that the Nikons have. These old, older Nikons, instead of like many of the cameras, just use a little black plastic button like this that comes out like the Canon uses. Or, I don't think it's a little bit fancier with their other button. And Nikon, Olympus doesn't have the button, but Nikon, they got real tricky because they got this whole system of stuff that works, this rewind button that's down. Then you pop the, the uh, wind motor out and it's supposed to pop back up again. But we've got to fit that through this bottom of the camera. So, only two screws, no four. No screws around the tripod mount. That probably was a good idea that my Danny had to do that. All right. Now, listen, listen to this because you can hear it when it gets to the end. careful not to tighten them down very much and then I guess they cool down or something and they got much tighter than I put them in. Now I lift this and you will watch that it will lift right over this rewind button like that. And I kept the screws in there. Now here is our 1.35 volt solo battery. These are supposed to be like the mercury batteries. Um, I got this a while ago, not real long ago, but uh, I got it in the M6.3.25 or something like that. And let's see here, the negative is the round end, and the positive is the flat side. Can you, uh, can you see the read out here? Let's see if we can see this one. Hope this shows up on the camera. 1.35 volts, 1.36, 1.35. So that's what that battery is supposed to be. And I think you'll find on most of these early cameras, early mechanical match needle cameras, that use these one, the 1.35 volt batteries that they uh, They're hard to find now. Very difficult because they were mercury and they're hard to find in the States and you have to go to Russia or something to get them. But here is where the tricky part is because remember this. This is what we're doing this video for here. There's that rewind button. Whoa! And I just popped it up. So. got that put back on, I think. I'm going to keep it leaning this way because I don't want it to do that. I want it to go down.
that was the problem with this. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to work on that and not watch it, not make you all watch it. That was the content of what we're doing here. You should save your batteries and watch you don't get, let that thing go bouncing. It's got to go just right. Maybe like that. Let's see. One more time. Yeah, there we go. It's almost there. There. Now, see the button has popped back up. The screws are popping back up and falling down. These are, these are about half the size of the other screws, the other cameras. Nikon really gave people bad out of focus vision. Trying to steer a little tiny screws like this. All right, now. Those are tightened enough. And, see button, down, and then wind, pops back up. All right, so that's how we got that put back together. And that shows us with how to change batteries with a stuck battery compartment door. Um, Cause I didn't show you this one. No, it doesn't take a nickel anyway, it takes like a penny, maybe a dime. Yeah, I fought with this for the longest time, thinking that way. It's, see, it'll move a little bit, but not far enough to open. So, now I don't need to. Anyway, I hope that you found something useful on uh, preparing dealing with the bottom of your camera and how to change batteries. Uh, tell you what, if this was helpful, leave me a comment, a like, uh, a subscription would be great. I'm just getting close to a thousand right now, so I'm, I'm closing in on it. Uh, and I hope to get there pretty quickly and you can help if you want, if you stuck with it long enough and you want to do a subscribe. It doesn't cost anything, but it really helps the channel and helps me to present more of these interesting, educational, useful, hopefully, videos on old antique cameras. Thanks for watching. Watch for your next one. And this is Mr. Gibson Guy saying goodbye. Till next time.